Hello, everybody. How are you all doing? Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Have you got your contact center all love hearted up? Look, I've done some bits in the background and I changed the. Ooh, no, come on. Come on, Martin. Use your brain. <laughs> Sorry, I've still got a cough. I changed the, um, the logo, if you can notice, in the in the top corner. And for those of you that have messaged on LinkedIn, um, thanks very much for saying happy birthday. It's also my my birthday today. So there's an old an old gag in there somewhere that the postman used to think I was some kind of gigolo when in fact um, it was birthday cards. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nikki. Hello, Josh. How you doing, mate? Bev, good morning, hippo birdie. <laughs> to use hip hippo birdie to use. Um, happy birthday, old fella! Thank you, sir. Thanks, Chris, mate. See you tomorrow night, maybe. Um, hello, mate. Hey, Cam. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. I can't see who you are. I think you have to change your settings. Um, oh, thank you very much, Elisa. Hello, Mark. How are you? Oh, Dion. I used to. I lived in Wales for a while. My father was in the air force, so I can still count in Welsh. That's about all I can do. In die tree ped while pimp quest scythe with now deg, and Bobo Bach, which I think means naughty boy. <laughs> hey, Kez, how are you? Good morning. Happy birthday. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Hello, Nick. I'll definitely be seeing you tomorrow. Uh, so I'm off to Game Changer up in. Newcastle I think there is still time to get to that event so please do I think it's free uh, it should be a great session Chris Rainsforth is there so I mean that's all you need to know groovy many happy returns of the day thank you very much hello everyone this is brilliant good good to hear Mark um, hello Emma thank you thank you very much last night at football training um, as you know some of you know I coach an uh, under 14 girls team they, uh, my daughter Harmony got a card, they all signed it and sang happy birthday and genuinely their faces when I, they, someone, one of the players said, how old are you? I said, I'm 49. And they were like, oh my God, you are really old. And they were, they were genuinely um, shocked at, and amazed that the, at my age, I can still walk. <laughs> Six months until yours, Jules. Sure, you'll be doing a gig. Don't look a day over 25. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yes, I will. Jules is going to do an intro for the for the podcast. For those of you that don't know, he is a uh he's a music producer of great renown. See you tomorrow. Look forward to game changer. Yes, Duncan. Now we're gonna to have to stay on contact center stuff rather than talking about football and the fact we used to live in the same part of uh, Middlesex around about the same time, probably played against each other. Welcome to the Random Aches and Pains Club. Yeah, I, I'm still getting myself out and playing football twice a week. And then the other uh, five days, I can't walk. So um, that's where we're at at the moment. So thank you so much for all of the, the love. I genuinely appreciate it. Now you're going to have to indulge me for a second. Talking of love, let's check out this poem about love in contact centres. Under the hum of the call centre lights, the phones ring day and night. This is a place where love takes flight amidst the chaos it shines so bright. The agents always toil with care, answering calls with patience rare. Their voices are soothing balm, bringing comfort to those in qualm. Amidst the din and the noise, there's a beauty that each employs. In the way they handle each call, with kindness and love, they give it all. And as the day draws to a close and the calls finally come to a repose, the agents leave with a smile, having made a difference all the while. For in the heart of the call centre, where technology and humanity enter, there's a love that grows each day, bringing joy in its own unique way. So here's to the call centre's love, a shining example from above. May it continue to flourish and thrive in the hearts of all those who work inside. <laughs> no, you do not remember dribbling past me. That wouldn't have happened. The ball, yes. The man... Maybe. The ball and the man together? No. <laughs> so 
there's a, a lovely little poem. I would like to say that I, I wrote that, but that would be a, a lie. That was chat GPT. So I said, I used the prompt, please can you write a poem about um, con call centers, contact centers? And that's what it came up with. Pretty good, don't you think? What do you think of that? Um, morning, Martin. Happy birthday. Thank you, mate. Now then, <clears throat> we are going to watch uh, a little video. How relevant to all of you is, is this? Thank you very much, William, for taking us through the financials. I'm here to talk to you about the purpose, our vision, our, our, the, the way we're going forwards and the way we're going to make a success of this business. So for the next quarter, we're really looking to globally engage end-to-end -end catalysts for change, intrinsically productizing cross-cultural channels and competently expediting seamless alignments. We want to rapidly create advanced dynamic customer experiences and compellingly scale user-centric sources. So we're going to be uniquely targeting low risk yet high yield web readiness. Our exploratory research points to deconstructive relative contingencies and now is the time to revamp and reboot our holistic asset projections. With our interactive third generation paradigm shifts I'm sure we can make a window of opportunity to really discuss our clients holistic monitored innovation and now's the time to take grasp this opportunity and take the company forward. So I'm sure you're now really clear on the purpose and the vision for the business and uh, I wish you good luck in advancing uh, our sales and meeting the targets which are obviously 10 times more than they were this time last year. Thank you very much. I loved it. I absolutely loved it and I think um, there's a the, the one of the points behind it is uh, that if when you're in when you first get into management and you hear listen to a lot of senior managers that you listen to them talk and you think I'm gonna need I genuinely thought at one point I'm gonna need training in being able to talk in a in a way like that um and it's it stops people it stops people wanting to progress um oh, well done. <laughs> ah thank you Scott as well Sounds like the bollocky job ads I've been binning. <laughs> Does this video have a translation? No idea what was all that noise about. It was it was a joke, by the way. Um, so any chance you can explain it to an eight? This is the whole point. <laughs> it is it is funny, isn't it? Um, I know. How did she keep a straight face? I thought that was um, that was awesome. So I'm. I'm a bit overdue. I want to get to. I'm kind of rambling all over the place, but it it is my birthday, so I can do what I want. <laughs> Flowery rhetoric is the words. Very true. Now Marianne doesn't mince her words or talk in that kind of uh, senior leader lunatic way. <laughs> Marianne's awesome. Uh, oh, by the way, if um, if you know of any places that are looking for expert outsourcing performance um, from a boutique type provider please do hook up Marianne she's got a group of people ready to go um, and she will absolutely uh, deliver for you and all your client um, thank you very much okay so here's the question for you it's a day of love but where do you draw the line is it okay um, to tell your teams you love them so if you've been in leadership positions, have you ever told your teams that you that you love them? And I thought on Valentine's Day, what better time to explore whether you have um, ever told your teams you love them? I can't keep up with the... <laughs> uh, I cannot keep up with all the comments. Sorry, everybody. Um <laughs> you're aware you're at the center of something genuinely important the exciting thing is trying to establish what that center is and also exactly what's in the middle of <laughs> it's all about blue sky thinking we're getting them all now was she a chat gpt avatar <laughs> she very well could have been couldn't she um love you too marianne see we say it's a day of love um yes and we are partners so here's a question have you ever told your teams um you love them so for for me i'll kick us off um in the past i yeah i absolutely have told my teams um that i love them that i'm coming from a place of love i think it's important to 
to make sure that they and and you're treating them with intelligence that you just they are they're intelligent people they know that you're not falling in love with them but you 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 do love them um marianne's kicking us off yes i've told them i love them lots and lots um have to do the hard yards first it's within our wheelhouse we're still on the we're still on the comments aren't we danny um danny but from a cultural point of view where do you stand on this telling your teams you you love them i saw um something the other day about um it was like one of these street interviews and it was a guy coming up to other guys saying when was the last time you told your friends you love them and i thought i i I do that kind of all the time sometimes it's it's in jest but a lot of the time um I, I know Peda from BPA. When we still catch up, I I tell him I love him at the end of the end of the call, I, and I I mean it. Um, so Barry, yeah, I love my team. Told them, and I love being a part of it. It is, you know, I'm I'm with you, but I also know that there are people who say, well, you shouldn't really, you shouldn't really use this word and talk about these types of things with your um, with your team. I just wanted to get an idea of where um what you guys thought of it you always come up with the with the goods so as we go through the show please do just answer this is it okay to tell your teams you love them and if you have um what are you doing for them today are you doing anything special for them today bearing in mind it is um it's valentine's day technically it's not my birthday either because bev prefers my birthday to be pushed to tomorrow So Valentine's Day can be about her. Um, Here we go. I knew knew something would come. Love is personal. Not everyone says it to their partner, let alone their team. The important bit is whether you show it. There you go. There you go, Danny. I knew I could rely on you. Christy, all the way from Australia. Christy is awesome. Uh, Coming from a place of love is perfect. When coaching, I certainly show appreciation and love is a way of showing that. I agree. I absolutely agree. And again, it's interesting that you've both used the word show there, that you can show your teams um, that you love them. So, yeah, keep these, keep the responses to this coming in. Um, For those of you that kind of are following what I'm doing, you'll know that the team leader community and um, certainly Christy and Barry are are part of the community and Kez are part of the community. Sorry, let me. Yes, of course it's fine. Why not tell them you love them if you mean it? I'm with you, Marianne. And I know yours is a very loving, loving centre, the the Verity um, centre. So, um, yeah, Kez, Barry and Christy, you are all part of the brand new team leader community. It's a community that I set up for team leaders across our great industry, team leaders and team managers, actually, or aspiring team managers. To be honest, the door's open for everyone. But um, it's predominantly aimed at team leaders, team managers, and helping them become expert leaders. It's live now. We've we've actually got people in it, um, which is absolutely amazing. And I just want to give you a week, the first week's update. First members are in. There's some more joining today and tomorrow, and um, hopefully for the rest of the week. So far, we've got people uh, representing retail, finance, and travel. I wrote this slide and then afterwards an outsourced, a BPO joined. So we've got a BPO in there as well. We've had our first interactive session on Zoom. I make it sound a bit grander than it is. It was actually me and Barry, but we had a really good catch up. Um, And we're going to be doing these. There's a whole load of interactive sessions coming, but we're doing accountability um, was that was the meeting on on Monday and you'll be pleased to know Barry I'm working my way through I've definitely done one of them already uh, one of my three goals Uh, we've had events um, we've had people share events we've had videos tips questions asked and suggestions for new spaces for the community I'm absolutely um, loving it if you would like to join just head over to my profile or send me a message um it is buzzing in there. It's going to get bigger and better. And, you know, hopefully it will help our team leaders and our team managers. So um, please do get in touch if you're if you're interested or you know team leaders or team managers that would benefit from, from being in a community dedicated to them. Um, 
Okay, let's go. Nick, it depends on the person, people on the receiving end. Is it what they will appreciate or does it make you feel good? Very good point. And I think that's where we have to demonstrate our emotional um, intelligence, isn't it? That we're not doing something that's going to turn people off, give them the ick and make them go, oh, God. Um, Jordan's good point here. Words can be cheap. I find actions to be a far better currency. Very, very true. Um, if it's just said without um, meaning, then um, it's not going to – It's it, it actually has a reverse effect, doesn't it? Um, Barry, it was very grand, mate, wasn't it? Um, you need to change your profile picture because Barry is looking super slim. His beard – he looks like a Viking. His beard is amazing, and he's got super long hair as well. We're very, very jealous. Um, I love what you're doing with team managers and team leaders. It's so much needed. They're such an integral part of the company. They should be developed, educated, nurtured, and inspired. Couldn't agree uh, more. And hopefully that's what the community will become. We're ho hopefully helping from day one right now, but it definitely will become that kind of environment where they are nurtured and developed. It was so helpful just to talk through my intentions with someone and check in. They were the right ones to get the results I wanted. Really true, Barry, isn't it? I don't know if any of you, uh, any others have accountability buddies. Um, certainly working from home and I tend to work on my own. Um, having this type of interaction was really, really helpful. Even just preparing for the meeting, basically what we did is say, here are my goals that I'm working on this week. Next week, we'll check in and see how far we've done. And I can get easily distracted. And yesterday... I came back to those three that I'd written and thought, right, I just, I want to do those because I don't want to turn up and say to Barry, I haven't done any of them. Um, I've had a good week, but I haven't done any of them. Um, so yeah, it was very helpful. Um, just to give you an update on the latest episode that's out, this is um, an award special for those of you thinking of um, entering the CCMA Awards. The This episode should be helpful um, because Jackie and Rachel go through everything there is to know about the interview process. So um, lots of people listening to that one. That's the, the latest episode that uh, is out. Okay, now I just want to highlight three, you, you know, on a Monday I put out um, Job Seekers. I wanted to highlight three in particular. I'll do this every week. And we've got Sarah Frayne, who is the head of contact is looking for head of contact center roles and she is based in Stockport, but I'm sure would be willing to, as all of the, as we all are, talk to people uh, in different locations about the right role. Jane Slater can do customer experience, speech analytics, ops. She's she knows everything and would be a real asset, and she is in Staley Bridge. And Gemma Newton is looking for roles in QA. And she is based near near Leeds. So QA, kind of close to my heart from my previous role. Um, these three people, plus everyone else on that list, actually, on a Monday, could make a, a massive difference. If you're watching this and you're not yet connected with Sarah, Jane, or Gemma, please do connect with them on LinkedIn and be their eyes and ears for for relevant roles that are coming up because the three of them, could make a massive difference to somebody's um, company. And I think this is the whole purpose of having a network on LinkedIn, right, is that we can we can help each other. And what better day to evidence that than, um, than Valentine's Day? Uh, thank you, Christy. Best wishes to all. We've all been there, haven't we, where we've been looking for, for roles. This is why I started doing it some five, six years ago, because I went through a period where I was – um, out of work and just kept missing just kept missing things on LinkedIn um, and my friends would message me and say oh I saw this role I was going to tag you but I thought you probably found it already N no <laughs> no I hadn't please tag me in future um, so that's that that's what gave birth to to doing that and um, if you've looked at my list and thought why don't you do one as well that was the whole point when I started was hoping that other people would do it as well. So why not take some of the names on the list and, and start sharing as well? It can't, it can't hurt, can it? So um, to Sarah, Jane and Gemma, wish you all the best. Hope this is the week where you get some great opportunities that match your talent. Um, okay, so 
you will remember that um, I said I was going to start going through Contact Babel. Um, yeah, Chrissy's had the same thing with just missing out on things. Um, I was going to go through Contact Babel's Decision Maker Guide and um, go through it chapter by chapter. So the, this next section that we're on is about what has happened to a topic that we all love. Now, I'm expecting some comments on this. Come on. Um, this is average call duration. So Contact Babel, Decision Maker's Guide, tracking the average call duration from 2004 to 2022, sales and service. And you can see the um, for, from service, it's gone from 220 seconds to 426 and it's had its steepest rise pretty much over the pandemic period for sales and for service um does this surprise you is this what you are experiencing in your centers and, and why do you think this may be why do you think that the call duration time is getting longer is this because it's true what everyone's been saying that we're we're experiencing a time where the transactional stuff is being dealt with through um, technology and um, ai or self-serve and that what we're left with in terms of voice calls going to agents are more complex and then need more um, more time or or and or is it that um, we've spent less time being so dictatorial about AHT and we're just allowing people to freestyle a bit more? Um, let's have a look. Here we go. So as AI takes away simple queries, you're left with more complex discussions for agents. Uh, from a service perspective, perhaps an indication that simple issues are handled online and our people are handling more complex issues. So Nick Sellers and Danny Wareham, yeah, exactly. It would seem to be um, showing that, isn't it, in these type, of, these type of results. It does make you wonder, when you look at something like this, where, will it, where does it go? Will it, keep, will it keep rising or will we see it start to, to tail off? Um, I think Nick's had, from a sales perspective, puzzling. Surely technology should smooth the way and improve handle times. Yeah. You're right. And if you if you think, look at that rise over the last year. Uh, more complex queries and hopefully a shift from time on the phone being a bad thing to more quality conversations. I love that, Barry. Uh, Ken, more working from home, so don't have the support around them if they need help. Therefore, calls can take longer. That is a real... I, I hadn't even thought about that, Ken. So that's a great, great shout. Uh, not at all. We no longer have a building people can walk into. The contact center is the heart and customers want to have the issue resolved well on the phone. Very true, Christy. Um, service products are also more complex. Look how much more phones can do compared to 2000. Okay, so again, the complexity element, but this time the complexity of the services and products that us and our industry are, are dealing with. <laughs> Peter made. I didn't know Peter was here. He doesn't normally, you don't normally lurk, Peter. Product regulatory... Process and system complexity have all increased. Self-service is reduced, low effort interaction. Very true, Peter. Love you, mate. See? Um, contact centers focusing on complex queries as simpler ones become automated. My center also does not have AHT as a KPI to give the team the space to have the right conversation. However, we balance with coaching and call control techniques. Cameron, I, I, I absolutely love some of the terminology in your comment um giving the team the space to have the right conversation what a wonderful wonderful sentence that is um and it's interesting isn't it kind of the removal of um aht and that kind of restriction um but yeah i love that love that sentence marianne i agree with nick and danny however i have done some in cam inbound campaigns over the last year where we've taken a minute off the call handling time versus the in-house company this was based on education coaching and read guiding agents on their con conversation really good point marianne because i think um 
the 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 length of the call doesn't always equate to it being good uh so um yeah really good point all of what you said might be interesting to see wait time laid over the top of that too alistair alistair how you doing also from australia i'm loving that you guys stay up to to watch this i do appreciate it uh, i sent you a message the other day as well mate check it out um we're all more emotive and more likely to share emotion that requires more effort from advisors to manage successfully interesting point pete is this the because of the pandemic then that we've all gone through a shared experience like that we are more inclined to talk and be more emotional is that is that what you're saying that's very interesting sales has gone up due hi jeff sales has gone up due to regulations and scripts and how will consumer care from the fca change that do you think do you think it will become it will lead to this continuing to rise what, what do you think um we experienced a higher HT due to poor SLAs during the pandemic. This is Simon. Hi, Simon. No one was ready for the sheer volume. So abandonment rate and ASA was higher. So people wanted to express their disappointment. That doesn't explain the continued trend into 2022, though. I think the other contributors are hitting on the head around more complex query management due to self-serve for simpler queries. Very true. It's only 9.30 p.m. in Tesco, not too late, Martin. No, we're, we're past the watershed then. Um, we, we can swear. Uh, so, interesting, isn't it? Really interesting. Now, as well as that one, I thought I'd share another one with you. Again, the same chapter. I'm just going to go through these chapter by chapter. I hope you find it interesting. Um, this one is agent activity. Now, it didn't have how this had changed. But I wondered again, does this feel does this feel right to you? Does it does it reflect what you see out there? And also it's quite helpful to know these stats, isn't it? Because we tend to, I don't know about you, but without looking at this kind of stuff, I tend to rely on things that might be a bit out of date. So knowing that on average across all of the companies that they surveyed, and there's hundreds that the talk time of agents accounts for 50%, dealing with emails and web chat, 15.7%, uh, RAP, being in RAP, 10.2%, idle time, 89 training, 61 admin and paperwork, 51 and then other, 37 don't know about you, whenever I look at a chart that says other, I always wonder what is that, what is other? um what do you think of that so i think what you could say looking at that is um 66 of their time two-thirds of their time is is on it is is active they're they're talking or they're dealing with emails and and web chat um does that ring true for you well it is true but does that reflect where your centers are at look at the trend though it's upwards across 18 years We've made it easy to access companies. Very true, Bev, isn't it? Albeit you wouldn't always get that impression from um, the media. In the short term, I think the pandemic was an accelerator of emotive conversations. But I think the shift started a while back, and I believe it's a wider societal change. Love it. Love it, Pete. What does? What are we thinking of this? Does this... Is this right? Love a good other <laughs> yeah always leaves me wanting to ask loads of questions to find out what the other is i don't know about you but when um when whenever we got a new system and it came to call outcomes that people could put in if the option was there to remove other i always took it i couldn't stand anything going in other albeit at the start as long as you explored what the other was, sometimes it generated some other new interesting call outcomes, but other just became like the elephant's graveyard of stuff. And um, there's always too much in other. So um, does this seem right? They're busy. Our guys are busy, aren't they? Um, maybe we could do with a bit more in, in training maybe other 
is team huddles and things. No idea. Um, I shall. So I will do that again um, next week. Uh, we have this week coming up, believe it or not, is the 100th, 150th episode. Um, hold on. Tea breaks, foosball matches, ice cream on hot days. That sounds like a perfect day, mate. No spinning on foosball either. No spinning is allowed. So can you believe it? It only seems like um, a couple of, a month or so ago that I was celebrating in London the 100th episode. So the next episode that is out will be the 150th episode. Um, Barry, no coaching in there, or does that sit in training for everyone? Really good question. Where does everyone else put coaching? Does that go in training? I agree with you. If you have other in there, people use it. However, it is not. People will ask for things to be added. Never liked other. It's a cop out. Congratulations. Thank you very much. No spinning for sure on football. I hope we all agree with that. If you spin your players in football, that is not allowed. Um, it's it's an unwritten rule. So yeah, 150. What uh, I will do something to mark the mark the occasion. Um, I still there's there's still far too many. Look at these lovely lovely faces. Um, Marianne, there you are. Look, for example, Barry. I know you're on here somewhere. Um, Danny, you're on here. Uh, I'm just so lucky to have um, put this together and got to speak to all of these smiling, happy faces. There's Peter. Oh, there's Danny. There's Bev. Um, there's Mia. Look, still probably my favourite. Um, but yeah, 150th episode is coming up. From a personal perspective, calling call centres, letting my queries resolve quite quickly, then the upsell, which lengthens calls. Very true, Mark. Very true. Without that upsell, I guess it wouldn't be um, it wouldn't be as long, would it? So, yes. Look forward to the hundred and fiftieth um, episode. I still have a long way to go uh, to get to the kind of likes of Joe Rogan, but I think this is very true from Danny. Beautiful faces on a, on a day of love. How can as a representation of our industry, all of these smiley, happy faces? Um, backed up with great skills, experience, integrity, values, happy to share. What a wonderful, wonderful industry um, we are in. Uh, we're putting this um, visual together. I spent far too long afterwards just looking at it, just thinking what a lovely, lovely collection of amazing people we have in our in our industry. And that, and that goes to all of you guys too. I'm not planning on stopping. So if you haven't yet been on and you'd like to be on, just as long as you're okay to be patient, because it is just me, um, then just send me a message. And you, if you've got something to say, then you can absolutely come on. Um, the podcast is for all. So please do let me know if you would like to. I'm just going to keep this wall of faces growing. Honoured to be up there with such great people. Barry's episode is brilliant. Yours is, mate, um, about coaching. So I'm sure uh, people are just as honoured to be up there with with you. 150. Wow, that's amazing. Love to be part of your journey. Love you, my friend. And by the way, I mean it. Good. Yeah, so do I. Um, so yeah, like I say, if any of you are interested that haven't yet been on or you, you want to come back on and you are okay to wait... Uh, it's quite a long wait time um, at the moment, but yeah, I the, I'm going to keep going. It's never, it's never, never going to, it's never ever going to stop. No matter what happens on my self-employed journey, even if I if I have to um, go back to being employed, maybe not, I'm hopefully not, but I will carry on with a with a podcast. So um, please do if you want to be on. Come, oh, there you are. Look, I've just spotted you. <laughs> thank you mate appreciate that it's quite mesmerizing isn't it to kind of go through and see all of the all of the different faces um 
Right. So I, as we're getting to uh, the end of the, the show, I just want to give you an idea, some ideas here for some random acts of uh, kindness. Why not do that today? Why not do something today just to make someone feel special on, uh, on Valentine's Day? Buy someone a gift. Give an unexpected compliment, or pay it, pay it forward at Costa or Starbucks. We were in the Costa drive-thru once, and I was moaning about how long the guy in front of me was taking. His order was ridiculously long, and it turns out when I got to the window, part of the reason for the delay was that he was paying for me, <laughs> paying for us. So um, that made me feel quite good and bad all at the same time. When was the last time you spoke to your parents? So call your mum and dad just to say you love them. And so on and so on. So hold on. I'm missing a few comments. Finally got to one of these fabulous shows. And that's the beauty of it, Paul, isn't it? That people are um, listening and joining and starting to listen right now. Uh, They stand the test of time. Someone um, spoke to me about Rachel Goddard's episode, which was episode two, about compliance and quality. They spoke to me um, the end of last week about that and how it had helped them. Now that is uh three years three years old um so wonderful to see how far you've come it's a long way from millbrook yes very true still the same bumbling buffoon though um fail first attempt in learning love it what happened to your buy a coffee thingy buy a coffee mm. you're gonna have to help me with that one bev you know what I'm like at w- holding on to information? You mean a bit of Fergun? A little plug there for Danny. You should check him out, though. Um, an unintended consequence of trying to drive efficiency for the business without considering the consequence it has for the most important thing of business. Our people. Very true, Nick. I think that related to um, earlier, didn't it? Totally agree, Martin. So, yeah, if you if you haven't yet listened to an episode, just pick one out. Go to my website, uh, getoutofrap.com, and you can search any net like if you want to do coach search coaching and it will give you all of the episodes that relate to coaching and they all do stand the test of time um but yeah coming up to 100 and 150 unbelievable um sorry for being late happy birthday martin happy valentine's day oh no problem rob good to see you hear from you um okay so that is it i hope you all have a lovely rest of the day Thanks again for um, joining and watching. And thank you to Sabio, who are my partners today and allowing me to to do it. Um, It is appreciated. So have a lovely rest of the day. Happy Valentine's Day to you all. And see you next week. Put it in your calendar for next week. So see you next Tuesday.